Hi, I'm Ben from Ellie. I want to show you how simple we've made it to give a grade, some feedback, or some assessments to your students from open-ended questions or speaking tasks that they may have submitted back to you from some lessons that you've assigned to them. Sometimes the process, in fact, often the process of grading and giving feedback can be tedious, it can be complicated, it can be time-consuming, but we think we've made something that's quite simple to use and quite enjoyable to do and meaningful for your students on the opposite end. All right, so let me show you how this works. Up in the top right corner of any page, you'll see the uh, a little icon here that looks like an inbox. Now, at the top of that, there's a red dot right now. If there's ever a red dot at the top of your inbox, it means that your students have submitted something to you that requires your attention. If it's something like a multiple choice or a true false, it's not gonna give that dot. But if it's any type of open-ended question or a speaking task that requires feedback or grading, you'll see a red dot there and you'll know that there's something that's come in. So check that out anytime you see the red dot. I'll go ahead and click that. And when I click that, I land on what we call grade feed. GradeFeed is a lot like an inbox, uh, an email inbox, where all of the different open-ended questions and speaking tasks uh, amongst different students and different classes all come into one place so you can focus on it all at the same time. There's some filters here at the top. You can filter, for example, by class and just drill down and narrow that focus. In this particular case, I'm gonna focus on everything together. And right now I can see that I've got a few different submissions from a few different students. I've got four submissions that have come back to me from three different students. And some of them are stacked, by the way, you'll see that this bottom card is just one card from Lucia, but the one above it from Amir is five cards stacked stacked on top of each other. And the difference there is that uh, anytime you see stacked cards, the task that you submitted had more than one question in the task. Uh, so you'll know that there's multiple questions that you have to go through to get through that whole task for that one student. I'm gonna start from the bottom and show you how simple, actually I'm gonna start from the top here. I'm gonna start from this uh, submission from Lucia. In this particular case, the lesson was called Ocean Story. And in it, there was a picture in which there was a question where she was asked, where Lucia was asked to describe the picture or write a story. And it looks like she chose to write a story. Now, I can't remember the picture exactly as a teacher, so I can either click back to the lesson year by clicking on the lesson title, which would take me away from here. I don't really want to do it. I can also view the reference down here um, to give me some context as to what this picture was about. So if I click that, it just pops up there and I remember now, oh yeah, this was the picture and I can see it very clearly there. All right, here was the story that Lucia wrote. There once was a red lobster. He was a cute little guy, had only one job. His job was to protect the treasure. It goes on and she wrote this nice little story with um, no grammatical mistakes and no spelling mistakes. So I'm gonna give her full marks here. Now, how do I do that? Over on the right side, I've got a slider that is from zero to 100. So you can give a score out of 100. And as you give that score, it's also giving a star rating uh, to the right of that. So I'm gonna make that 100%. Uh, if I wanted to, I could make it like 75, whatever I wanna do. Now I can also just click to a star. If I wanna be even quicker, I can just click that and it's gonna give me 80% um, to give to my student. And once I'm in there, I can also adjust the range. I can go anywhere up between 80 and 90, for example, is four stars. And once I cross that threshold, I'll be into four and a half stars. So it's up to you as to whether you use the slider or the stars. It doesn't matter in this case because I'm giving her 100%, it was great. And then I can leave a little comment here. Hey, great story. I loved it. Um, thanks for making me laugh. Because it was a funny story and it was perfect. All right, so I can just hit send and once I hit send, you'll notice that it's just out of the way. It's gone. I have three items now instead of four. In just a minute or so, I was able to get through one of those. Now I'm gonna jump down below because I did notice there was another submission by that same student, Lucia. And this particular one was around that same uh, picture, but she now had to record herself um, giving uh, or reading that story that she had written. I'm gonna move myself over to this side for one second. I hope I didn't make anybody dizzy, but it interferes with the play button over there. All right, so this was a recording or a speaking task where she recorded that same story. Again, if I forget, I can just click on it, uh, see it larger there. And let's see how she sounded here. There once was a red lobster. He was a cute little guy. 
Okay, it goes on. Now, in this particular case, she did have a couple of mistakes. She made some um, some pronunciation mistakes, but also she missed a few words. And so I'm not going to give her as high of a mark. Uh, I'm just going to give her, in this particular case, uh, four, four stars. But I might actually bring it down to three and a half, and I'll give her some reason down here in the comments. I could explain that there. Uh, for time's sake, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to dismiss this one and it's gone. So now I've got two left here. All right, so these were those stacked types where there's multiple questions within one task. Uh, maybe I'll start up here at the top with Keiko. And in this one, it was a grammar exercise within a discussion starter. So this discussion starter was about uh, the topic of burnout. And uh, the question within that uh, grammar exercise was uh, about the usage of had better. And it just says, uh, write a sentence using had better. So this is what she wrote, it getting late, you'd better, whoops, you'd better get some sleep. So I'm just going to copy that because there is a mistake there. I'm going to paste it right in there. And I'm going to say, uh, you forgot is. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite it there. It is getting late. And maybe I also want to leave her an audio comment too as well, just to be clear about that. Uh, so I can click this record button. Whoops, didn't mean to start recording there. I'll just erase that. I'll click record. Hey Keiko, uh, great job. Uh, I just talked to you a few points there because you missed a word. I've made a note of it there in the comments below. It is getting late and you forgot the word is. Nice job otherwise. So I can leave her that recording and that's there for her. I'll play, press play just to make sure that it worked. Hey Keiko, uh, great job. Yep, looks like it worked. And I'm gonna give her uh, just, actually I'm just gonna give her a straight 80%. Uh, otherwise, uh, really well done. Hit send and it's gone. Uh, now I've got one more question behind that card and there it is. It was the same sort of thing using ought to. So there's ought to. Uh, you were very mean to him. You ought to apologize. That's what she wrote. I think it works well. I don't see any mistakes in here. Uh, I will give her 100% and no comment on this particular one. I'm down to one. I only have one task left. It's a multi-question uh, task. And you can't... Re I'm going to move myself over here again. Don't mean to make you dizzy. But there is this suggested answer here. Anytime that you're not sure what the actual answer was from the reading or from a comprehension question, uh, you could click suggested answer and it just pops up here. So in this case, the question is, what is burnout? Here's the suggested answer. You could copy that if you wanted to. And once you copy it, you could just paste it right into uh, the comment area. But I'm going to take a look at what uh, Amir actually wrote and see uh, how that fares. Let me move this back. Uh, burnout is when you are very tired for too much stress. So there's a couple little mistakes in there. I'm going to copy that so I have an example of it. I'm just going to make a note here again. Burnout is when you are very tired from uh, too much stress. So two O's and from. Those are the mistakes. From two. Just make a note. All right, uh, I'll give him a score. Uh, he got the context right, but he just had a couple of little mistakes. I'm gonna give him 89%. I'll hit send and we're done. Now I'm not gonna go through all of these right now, looking at them, but let's just get to the last one and assume that I've read these and left some comments. And let's jump to the next one. All right, I'm on my last one here and let's see how this last one looks. Why is it important uh, to set priorities? Uh, it's important to set priorities so that you can enjoy the process or so that you can enjoy the other things in your life like your family, your friends, and your hobbies. No mistakes there. All fine. Let's give him a good score. I'm going to give him 100% and hit send just like that in a matter of a few minutes we're at inbox zero. There's nothing left to do. You've graded everything. You've given some feedback. You've given some star ratings. And most importantly, you've spent a little time a little time getting to know how your students are doing. And that helps you as a teacher understand what to teach next and how to help your students in that next class. So that's our grade feed. I hope you make a lot of great use of it. And I hope you start assigning more tasks that have these open-ended questions because the process of grading can be quite enjoyable if the tools are simple enough. All the best and happy teaching.